Namaste. Namaste, my friend. Journey of the Eastern Wisdom. We will not stop until we discover the real self. We have to want, we have to desire. But what we want, what we get, and what we like, we have to be very clear. If our wanting is based on, if we are wanting, anything that is constantly changing. We are getting and anything, everything that is changing and we are liking that everything is changing. It is not going to land up into the permanent peace and happiness. And that is why this journey is to find out that permanent peace and happiness in our current life. So we have to move the mind within. Without moving the mind within, it is not possible. Why to move the mind within? You tell me. You look at, you look, hear, taste, listen, find out anything in the world that is not changing. There is nothing in the world that is not changing. So whatever is changing, it will also change the state of the place, peace also. If you get peace or happiness by something because it is changing, so it will also change. So the change we don't like, so we want to arrest that change. And when you want to control that change, which is not possible, the life is miserable. Life is misery. I believe you are doing the practice uh, in the last session that we have been doing. It's a simple passive practice. You do nothing. You shift your attention from outside to inside. For example, you like pasta. Your attention is outside. That if the liking converts into a craving, an attachment, and obsession, then what is going to happen? Then this mind is not going to shift its attention from the pasta to inside. And what is that attachment and craving is known as, it is known as the impurity of the mind. So let us see, let, let us shift our awareness and attention step by step in a small practice and then see what happens. Eyes are closed. Eyes are closed. Find out the most comfortable position of the body. Then you look at, then we will comfortable, we will become comfortable. How we follow the uh, step of being comfortable? Simple, you, I told you, you look at, you look at, you look at the neck joint, be there and feel, feel sensation and comfort and steadiness. You are shifting your awareness in it and you're shifting your mind, if I say it in a simple way. Simple way. You are looking at the shoulder joints you are there, you feel the sensation, comfort, and steadiness. That itself is shifting your attention. But if the mind is running to some objects outside, it will not happen. But it will happen by the repeat practice and the regular practice. 
again looking at the knee joint mind goes to the knee joint you feel the sensation comfort and steadiness looking at the entire body mentally you are looking at the entire body now you feel the sensation comfort and steadiness in the body again check you feel the sensation comfort and steadiness in the body now another again shifting your attention from outside to inside at a deeper level that is what i say being carefree just uh, keep looking inside your head at any point so that point becomes the reference point and now the thoughts are coming going thoughts are going up and down moving right and left but you are aware of that point or that point in the space inside you are simply aware. You are not focusing. You are not making an effort. You are aware the thoughts are coming and going. Your reference point is deeper inside the head or the heart. You may have any reference point. Maybe a Jesus, if you believe. Maybe anything, any point. See that? So with that reference point, you see the thoughts are coming in, going left to right, right to left, up and down, top to bottom. Oh, let it come and go. You are simply aware of that reference point. This is being careful. You know, as if you are in a, going into a deeper practice casually and normal. Please find out in today's practice if you can shift your awareness and attention from the external world which is constantly changing to the world inside naturally without any effort you are becoming a higher seeker so that we can start the higher principles now see that so our attention is inside now looking uh, you keep looking inside the same reference point inside the forehead in the space in that space you keep looking and at the same time you maintain awareness of the body which is steady and now you start breathing quick and short breath to both the nostrils, gently. Continue breathing gently and quickly into your rib cage, paying attention deep inside the forehead.
Just continue breathing. You will experience the variety of changes, sensation, tingling, numbness, and you continue. Do not stop maintaining the steadiness in the body. Continue breathing in the state of the stillness in the body and the mind keeps looking deep inside the forehead in the space. And stop this breathing with chains of experiences. Please note it down, tingling, sensation, freshness, calmness, whatever it is. And in that state, again look deep inside the forehead. Pick up a point in the space and keep looking there. Now take a deep breath into the valley. Silent, slow breath first into the valley and into the ribcage. While breathing out, lips remain together. Breath is, air is coming out from the nose and you are making the humming sound. Gently, loudly, longer, deeper. What you have to do, you when you inhale, it is deep, silent, and slow breath. It should take time. Don't, do not be in a hurry. And when you are breathing out, that too, the humming sound, you are not doing in a hurry. It's a gentle, longer, deeper.
Continue humming. Nothing, just experience the state you are in, experience sensation, relaxation and stillness. And in that state of sensation, relaxation and stillness, now comes the breath goes in. Breath is going in, you drop Shanto Hum. That means I am the peace. And peace is like a good space. So every time the breath goes in and comes out, you become, you feel the infinite space inside and outside, dropping Shanto Hum. It demands a patience. Every time you may see the mind jumps outside, so you do nothing. Don't be worried. Just remember, recognize the mind is outside now. And then you start looking at the breath. And then start saying Shanto. Where is the need to worry, get into anxiety, reaction, or duality in a country? That is the nature of the mind that we have, we have acquired, we have cultivated because of so many impurities in the mind. So if we deal with the mind like a, like a play and a fun, the mind, we can take over the mind. But if you want to control, force it, Oh, it will. You already know it. You have those experiences. So you are in the state of the stillness of the body? Yes. Uh, you are looking at the breath? Yes. You are feeling the movement of the breath that is going in and out? Yes. When the breath goes in, are you dropping Shantoham on the breath? Yes. When your breath goes in or comes out, not only you are dropping Shanto Ham on the breath, but you also become aware of the space every time you are saying Shanto Ham.
when you do this practice with listening, what you should do, you continue doing the Shantaham at least for more than half an hour this week and check that are you able to do it. And if you are able to do it, we can move to the higher level. Shanti 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 Open your eyes slowly. Wanting, getting and liking. You are ready to listen with a higher awareness in that state of the calmness. It, the teaching is deeply absorbed when you listen to it in that state of meditation. So wanting, getting and liking. You wanted something, you got something. Good. Now you have to check. Is it right or right and good or pleasant? Is it temporary or permanent? Is it part or the whole? Is it sorrow or the happiness? Anything that you get from the world outside that you are wanting. If it has happiness in the beginning, it will convert into sorrow later. It is temporary and permanent. So just your, your mind moves, your mind plays with that object. Oh, it is temporary. Okay. Then it is right, good or pleasant. Oh, it's a pleasant. So when it is pleasant, it is temporary, it is a part. And then it gives you the sorrow or happiness. I have to play with it. That is the journey of wanting, getting and liking. Wanting, getting and liking anything from the world. What we want. Make a list. We don't get it. Why we want? What we want? Why we want? We want for the sake of peace and happiness. So I'm seeking. I'm wanting pasta to eat it, to be happy. You cook the pasta yourself and you are eating and you didn't like the taste. check. Right, good or pleasant? You were looking for pleasure. Pleasure is not there. Calm down. Cook the pasta again and eat it. That is one meaning. What we want, we don't get what we want from the world outside. In terms of objects, people, things, it's okay, I got it. But why we want from that, what we want from that object? We want an object or what we want from that object? So what we want from that object, everyone wants from any object or any relationship is peace and happiness, love and wisdom. But I get caught in, oh, let me grab it, let me, what I want, I have it. But still I'm not happy. So that is the meaning. A person may desire a particular job, but despite his best effort, and qualifications, he may not get the job. So we are seeking a pleasure from <coughs> the object, people, situation, things, or including the sex, food, etc. So if your mind is aware, if your mind is alert, when it is alert, then it checks. It's a right and good or pleasant? Is it temporary or permanent? It's a part of the whole? Or does it contain the sorrow or happiness? My friend, the moment you wake up, you, your mind should start ringing on these lines. 
And when it starts moving on these lines, you will never be anxious. You will never be upset. We have a free will to want anything. We have a free will. You have a free will. I have free will. Every human being, except the animals. I can want anything I want. I, I like. But if I check what I want with reference to, if it is right and good or pleasant, if it is temporary or permanent, if it is part or the whole, or it will result into sorrow and happiness, your mind will change. Just keep this principle in your mind. So the problem is that we never care for what we want. We do not reflect on what we want and if it is really worthwhile or not. Like we seek pleasure from the world of objects, but it is not there. It is not there. We want objects and delusion of happiness outside. That is what we covered last week. Delusion, ignorance, and illusion. The mind is working with that illusion, delusion, and then it starts wanting, and then it gets frustrated. Then it, what we, had, we have to do, let us check. So when you check what you want, you also answer why I want, because it is right and good. It has nothing to do with pleasant. Huh? It, is, it is that object which I want will not move into the sorrow and the happiness cycle. It is permanent. You want that. You're out of the delusion. You have no problem. We have a choice to want what is our essential nature. Do you desire real self when you wake up in the morning until you retire to the night? No, because my mind is engaged in the worldly affairs of wanting, of getting, of wanting, of getting, and of liking. Don't forget. Check it. Check the temporary and the permanent status. Check the sorrow and the happiness. Check whether you have a, you like it and it is pleasant or this is right and good. On these four lines you check. What we want, we do not get. That frustration of not getting it will dissolve completely. And if it dissolves completely, you are free. Free means what? You are free like a bird. You are always in the state of the calmness and peace. You are free from inside. So the first step we have done, what we want, we don't get. With reference to the four factors. What we get, we don't like. That is a crazy statement, but that is true to majority of the people, including me and you. What we get, we don't like. Look at the tangible uh, example. A person may finally get a long-awaited raise in their salary, only to discover that they knew that the extra money will meet expenses on medicine. <laughs> so what we like, we don't, what we get, we don't like sometimes. In comparison, we, we always see what we get, what of others got. There is another comparison, what we get and what others are getting. Others are getting more or less. We do not see our senses, motor organs are gift to us. We got it, this. We got this sense of our birth. 
we can use them for getting what actually is right and good. Again, four things. What is right and good? I have to choose that instead of what I like and what is pleasant. What is temporary and permanent? What is part in the whole? And I have to see that whether this object will put me into the vicious cycle of sorrow and happiness. Stop that. Then you will realize what it means by what we get we don't like. We, we got over as a human life. We don't celebrate it. We got that human life. We don't celebrate it. After reaching the so-called days of the maturity, the mind is full of those crazy thoughts, feelings, emotions, sensations, expectations, craving. The impurity of the mind. But impurity of the mind with delusion, illusion, and ignorance. When Master says, greatest surprise in human life is that when someone dies near and dear to us, we see at that moment we feel we will also die. But after that, we forget it. We fall into the delusion. The next day, we forget about our, about their death. And there is that deluded mind says, you will not die. Deluded mind never says, I will die. Even then, I know the statistics, how many, hundred thousand people die every day. Last session, we understood delusion, illusion, and ignorance. Now, how that impacts Perhaps my life daily, that is what we are trying to understand by the three phrases. What we want, we don't get because of the delusion. What we get, we don't like because of the delusion. What we like, it does not remain forever because of the delusion. And if you can find out that delusion part by understanding, by intellectually, by emotionally and by thinking, the moment you remove it, you are free. You are free from what? You are free from anxiety, duality, conflict. Really? Try this. Try this week. Check the four aspects. What we like, it does not remain forever. So we have covered just now what we want, we don't get. So when I have a feeling what I want, I don't get, it is because of the delusion and the impurities of the mind. What I get, I don't like it, it is because of the delusion. And what I like, it does not remain forever, it is again because of the delusion, because I have imposed permanency in relationship, in the objects of the world, and that is why what we like, it doesn't remain forever. <laughs> it doesn't remain forever. We like so many things in the world, but nothing is permanent. Whether you talk of the food and the clothes and the home and the car and the money and the relationship, a relationship with your son and the daughter, relationship with your honey, uh, What we like, it doesn't remain forever. We do not examine what we like is worth liking, getting attached, or have a craving for, 
or when we like something, we do not examine its status. Delusion takes over life, causes endless suffering. What we want, we don't get it. You have the, you have a frustration because what you want, you do, you didn't get it, or you don't get it. You have to inquire it is because of the delusion, because of the impurity of the mind. Otherwise, what you want, if it is 100% right and good, if it is permanent, if it is, but if it is beyond the vicious circle of sorrow and the happiness, you will never be frustrated. What you get, you don't like. So you have to be aware that all the sense organs and the motor organs and the mind to understand this journey of the Eastern wisdom, you got it by default. Subconsciously, we don't like it. Habitually. And what we like, it doesn't remain forever. What we like, so instead of what you like, you have to find out what is right and good and that you like. I have this guy who attended this session yesterday and he was saying, you know, you gave me the practice. I wake up in the morning totally tired and fatigued and exhausted and I don't feel like doing the practice. What you like, it does not remain forever. I said, what the heck you are talking about? I gave you the practice. You did the practice twice before me. And you see that it is giving me the benefit. Instead, you wake up in the morning totally exhausted. And then I explained all the three. Because what you want, you don't get it. You have a feeling inside that you don't get. So you are totally exhausted and you have a frustration because you don't get big. You have a frustration because you don't uh, like it. You have a frustration that the things that you are seeking does not, uh, does not remain forever. And that is why you are suffering. Really? You said yes, examine it. How can you say I have perfect example? You told me that you have slept nine hours. It was a deep sleep. Did you not say that? Yes. And still you are exhausted. At this young age of 30s, you are sleeping for nine hours. You see it is a deep sleep and you, when you wake up, you feel exhausted. That exhaustion comes from these three factors. You, if you analyze, you, you discern, you analyze and throw all the delusion, delusional part from what you want, you don't get it, what you uh, what you get, you don't like. What you like, it doesn't remain forever. The moment you remove that part, oh, does it affect the body? Yes. Does it affect the mind? Yes. <clears throat> so what should we do? I made it clear, but let us understand deeply. What should we do? Choose the desire that is permanent, that is eternal, that is all-pervading, that is right and good in your life for the sake of peace and happiness. Otherwise, you know, I'll go to the restroom, I'll take, I'll eat this pasta. You go on eating it. Externally, you're doing working like any other human being, but as a seeker inside your, your mind is naturally focused on that I'm seeking the real self, I'm seeking the permanent happiness. There is nothing outside that contain the property of peace, happiness, love, and wisdom. I have to see it clearly. I have to see it clearly. 
but uh, you see there is a there is a secret and that secret we are going to understand today uh, look at the animal you have lot of pets these pets any animal but it's easy to understand a dog so dog starts licking your body it does not have a choice it feels like licking and it will continue to lick and after that it stops animal mind is programmed to follow that activity we have an intellect that intellect is known as the free will what, what do you mean by the free will i can do it i cannot do it or i can do it differently or i can see what is right and good will you understand this group session and in that group session uh, two or three people and i could see the their pet dog is roaming around them and during the meditation they are licking the master so the dog cannot think i should lick now i should not do it i should do it differently we can think of it. Are you understanding? Very important point. Free will plays a crucial role in the journey of the self-discovery and the pursuit of permanent peace and happiness. You like pasta, for example, it's good, eat it. But you should not crave for it. The moment there is a craving, your intellect says, I, I can crave for it, I cannot crave for it, I can, I can eat something different that is right and good. You have reached to what is right and good. That craving and the attachment is gone. You are happy. That is the power of the free will and the intellect. So that free will, the moment your mind says what I wanted, I did not get, and hence I am frustrated. I have to apply this free will to understand what I want, I can think of. What I desire, I can follow the desire I want to rest or play. This free will is in the intellect. It helps us to it helps us to reflect and to do the introspection which is not available to the animals. And we both are human beings. Free will allows us to turn our attention inward and engage in self-reflection, asking the question, removing the delusion by choosing to examine our thoughts, emotions, beliefs, behaviors, we can gain a deeper understanding of our authentic self, the real self. The introspection helps us identify pattern, limitations, and areas for the growth. A seeker 
always set aside a time each day for meditation, for understanding, for writing every day. What I want, I didn't get it. Let me pick a list. What I, what I get, I don't like. Make a list. What I like doesn't remain for a make a list. Analyze. Permanent, temporary. What is right and good versus what I like and pleasant. Whole in the part. And the last one. Last one. Going, uh, is this object is going to create a vicious circle of sorrow and happiness or it is beyond that. The moment it is beyond that, you are already there. In order to live into that state of freedom from the delusion, ignorance, and illusion, I have to challenge my limiting beliefs. If I don't challenge my limiting beliefs, it will not work. We are going to the core principles of the Eastern wisdom to help you to live into that state of permanent peace. What I said. I have to break up this limiting belief. Our free will helps us by thinking, by to question and challenge the limiting belief and conditioning. That is preventing my real self to reveal itself from the society, from the parents, from the relations, from the objects we have, we live with those false expectations. I have to get rid of it. Not only that, when your mind says your mood is upset, challenge it. It's a belief. When you are sick, challenge mind to maintain calmness. When you are tired, use the free will to relax. You are upset and going to be angry. Use the free will to calm down inside. Find the cause of the anger and drop it. Did you get it? What I'm saying? We talk of limiting belief. We have to challenge our mood upset, our anxiety, our reaction, our up. Challenge it there and then. Why? Because I have a free will. I have a right not to get upset. I have a right to maintain the calmness even if the body undergoes some challenges. I have a right. I have a birthright to be calm. How are you getting it? If you don't get it, let me know. So when you start thinking in this way, then what happens, you know, gradually over a, after a week or two weeks or three weeks, you will start making a conscious choices in your life. Conscious choice when you wake up in the morning, doing the activities, living a personal and professional social and family life when you have started making a conscious choice. Nothing in the mind that can frustrate you which comes off from what I want, I don't get it. You will never have that idea and a thought in your mind. What I get, I don't like it. You will never think like this. What I like, it does not remain forever. You will never have that notion because you are making a conscious choices in your life. And obviously, we have to do the regular practice. We have to listen to it and then prepare. Oh, the certain point. Oh, this, these are the principles that I need to apply in my life. So listening and learning, contemplation and reflection, plus the practice, which ultimately transforms the mind. Transforms the mind.
So when there is a transformation takes place, we find that real self. And that is what Master continues to guide us. The entire journey of the Eastern wisdom says our real self is eternal, infinite, all-pervading. But it is obscured, veiled by the mental impurities. The sun is always shining, but the clouds can obscure it from the view. It doesn't mean the uh, it doesn't mean the clouds have destroyed the sun. It continues to be remain present. Sincere seeker purifies the mind. And purification of the mind is necessary to realize our true nature. True nature is of the nature of peace and happiness. Remember something, refining gold requires a heating. Either gold ore, you bring it and then you continue to heat then only it removes the impurities. We are good. We want to be heated up in the journey of the self-discovery. Free will should be used for self-reflection every day. Challenging your belief. Making conscious choices. Cultivating patience and engaging in the journey of these practices. Guidance from the wisdom, from the Eastern wisdom and teachers are important. One master living into that state of absorption sees beautifully eternal, infinite, the self abides. I'm translating into English. Eternal, uh, eternal, infinite, the self abides, obscured by the veil of ignorance that hide with conscious will the seeker strives, purifying the mind in truth to reside. Eternal, infinite, the self abide, obscured by the wheels of ignorance, delusion, impurity that hide. With conscious effort, the seeker strives, purifying the mind in truth to the to reside. I'm purifying the mind. I'm getting rid of this delusion in order to be settled into that. Don't forget who you are. You are a seeker on the path of the self-discovery. So what you are doing, you are using your intellect to purify the mind and realize your true self. Where? All the time in your personal, professional, social life. When? All the time. Mentally. I know you may ask, is a self-realization a realistic goal for everyone? Answer is big yes, for every human being. Self-realization is the birthright of all the human beings. But it demands a sincere aspiration, seeker, effort, patience, etc., etc. So how do I know that I'm making a progress on the path? You start living into inner peace and calmness, which is independent of anything. You start realizing it. You have a sense of non-attachment. You have a sense of compassion. Do you have it? How much you have it? Write to me.
when master writes yoga is or uh, yoga is emptying the mind of its content all the contents are empty there is no content mind is content less when the mind is content less the real self reflects whenever mind suffers from mood swing anxiety reaction duality it is because of the imagined pleasure which is because of the delusion illusion and the impurity can i recognize that moment instantly use the free will to change today we have understood that intellect contains the free will and i told you dog will continue to lick it does not have a choice it does not think should i lick at this moment when the person is doing a meditation no should i do it should i not do it should i do it differently animals do it. i can think as a human being so when you have a mood swing why don't you start thinking and find out the best option the moment you find the best option you will feel you are a half of your worries are gone when that to you are thinking in, internally it shifts your ego identification and it helps you to move your mind to live within and if we don't follow then perpetuating suffering and dissatisfaction through the same object through the same relationship through the same situation i fail to analyze my full potential and the purpose so i summarized only in three phrases i have a problem mind says what i want i i don't get it what i get i don't like it what i like it doesn't remain forever when you have these thoughts it will spring into millions of branches of a tree and that will for that puts you into mood upset anxiety duality conflict and lot host of other problems thank you